All right. Oh, and here he is. Thanks for coming along, everybody. Um, Tuesday, 14th of February, 2023. Um, open source antibiotics meeting about the Merlin is Hi, Chris. <clears throat> um, we can um, make a start and uh, you hang very kindly uh, posted the issue, which I will just quickly share to make sure everyone has it in front of them. <clears throat> um, and uh, so there are the usual things here, but I, you know, again, I'd like to focus in on a few key things um, initially, and then and then we can, uh, you know, call for any other business or anyone to present who hasn't presented yet. Um, I guess for me, the the main thing is is to get a um, an update on the um, the the data on any other uh, Warwick enamine collection compounds or atomized compounds, um, which we hadn't heard about yet. And um, an update on you know where we're up to with analoging around some of those structures which have shown some multi-targeting potential. Um, so just while we're, we're while we're on that, while I had the floor, there was um, an update. Oh, actually, it was it's already. I think Ed has already posted it to the issue just now. So let me just reshare that. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so the. Um, I guess we wanted to update everyone and make sure everyone was aware of what we've been buying here. Um, these are a little bit, it's a little bit, oh, that's better. These are um, compounds that are, so the, the compounds that we know about um, are up top there. The, the compounds that gave promising data in terms of multi-targeting. Um, and these are uh, the ones that we found uh, that there were commercial commercially available compounds also inexpensive molecules um ed have these all now come in yes they're all here waiting to be shipped okay and so we now just need to fix up how we're going to ship those um to laura for um evaluation i mean they hopefully will give some you know inhibition but you know this will hopefully flesh out some of the sar um it would be really useful if we could keep some. So that's why we were asking Laura about how you want us to send these compounds. We, we can make up DMSO stocks, but of the sort of five milligrams or so, I think it's about five milligrams of each that we've got, we would love to keep some, you know, as, as yeah. part of our group compound library, basically. Um, yeah. So we, we can fix that up and send you enough uh, for you to do the analysis with if we can just keep some. Yeah, it can okay. be a little bit less and I can just adjust some things uh, okay. here. All right. But yeah, yeah, um, yeah, Edwin, if you want to send me an email about it and we can follow up. Yeah, cool. Okay. I mean, the, the concentration that you asked for about 50 millimolar, is it, I think? If that's possible, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's it's so we, we're talking with lots of different people about how best to store compounds in a compound library that's useful, um, and and the two other places we're talking to are Frankfurt and Toronto because they're SGC sites and they both have different concentrations in DMSO, <laughs> you know, ten millimolar or twenty millimolar. You're the you're the, the highest concentration, um, so we're not going to be able to so, you know satisfy everybody. But I guess the more concentrated, the better, provided that yeah, it especially for the crystallization experiments. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Sure. For SAC, it won't make a big difference, but for the crystallization no. experiments, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Unless we buy a second batch for crystallization experiments, and then I can make my own concentrations. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's possible. I mean, for the for the enzymatic stuff, the biochemical assays, it, 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 ten or twenty micromolar uh, millimolar would be okay, I'm guessing. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, all right, and then um, some of the others which were not so available. Um, we have been looking at making. Um, so Ed, did you just want to walk us through this briefly? Uh, yeah, so the first ones, uh, the atomized ones, those are ones that we couldn't buy derivatives for. So uh, Eway and Eve have been making those. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's the route that Eway's uh, using. She hasn't quite got the coupling to go well yet um some difficulties with purification as well uh but that's ongoing 
And then this other one, uh, Daniel started working on it, but then Eve uh, has now, I believe, finished making this compound. Um, so that should be good. I guess we wanted to make like flight the derivatives of these, right? Because yep. both of these yeah. will be just repeats. Currently. Yeah, yeah, that's right. This is to get the chemistry yeah. sorted out. Yeah. And so I think uh, Eve already has Eve already has a, some derivatives of this. Um, in, okay. in, yeah. in the in the pipeline and, and these are obviously quite easy to make variants on yeah uh and then finishing off the competition ones um i made the van Dan one at the end of the last year um so that is also good to go and then these last ones from yan uh daniel was working on these um i've managed to make this one thiazole um, we had an oxidizer, but uh, I couldn't get that core uh, to go too well. So I think this one will do for now. They're quite similar. Great, great. I mean, with these tested, these last two, then that's that's all the essentially that's all the competition compounds, right? Yeah. So um, I mean, we should take stock of the data when we have the data and 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 see what's what uh, in terms of writing it up. Because you know, if we found a binder and it's it's real, then it would be nice—a nice little paper on generative modeling. Um, all right, great. I, as I was looking through this um, again just recently, I realized that there was another compound that we were interested in called JO6, which Daniel was going to make, but I think no one's picked it up yet. Oh yeah, uh, no one's picked that up yet. No. Okay, so it's still sitting there. Fine. Is that okay. the imidazole one? Um, I forget the structure, sorry, but it's it's one that's of interest, yeah. I think, still. Okay, we can have a look at that offline, but I guess we, because uh, Daniel was going to do it, but then he finished up. All right, great. So just to flag up that these are the this chemistry is being sorted out with a view to making a few derivatives, because these were not simply commercially available, and, and these ones are ready to go. So it's, it's um, pretty easy to generate, you know, compounds quickly for this kind of work. All right, so that's the, the sort of chemistry that's been going on in the lab um, related to the uh, the um, enamine and uh, work collection. I guess that's a segue into um, uh, you know Warwick. Any Warwick updates on those compounds in terms of potentially getting structures from any of the multi-targeting compounds? Is now a good time to talk about that? I think that'd be a very short update from Laura. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, well, I haven't been able to get again um, everything working, so I'm working on that. Uh, so I don't have updates on, on that end. Okay. And yeah, we said initially to send as well to the SSGCID the Yeo6 compound. This is to be seems to be one of the top compounds for uh, for the from the enamine. Uh, send it uh, to the SSGCID, so they can also try with uh, whatever enzymes they have available at the moment. Um, looking at the SA data, prioritizing with the SA data. Uh, we might have a pot potentially another one is MO2 that we could also send. Um, yeah. They are, again, they are, you know, uh, we're not talking about the best uh, inhib <clears throat> inhibitors yet because they're micromolar inhibitors, but we could give it a try as well with their system. Yeah. I mean, is there any, what are the criteria for deciding which compounds you? send forward because all of these were showing some promise is there any reason for those two in particular um i think Gedia can comment more on that because he has all the data on ic50s and yeah he made all the data <laughs> okay shall i mm -hmm. yep okay all right all right share my screen Right, that is... right, can we all see that? It's coming. Yep. <laughs> Good. Okay, so <clears throat> I'm partly to support some of the uh, writing going on about the NIH proposal, um, and also to catch up on some of the compounds that uh, came out as hits from the enemy's screen. 
Um, and also because we've had an issue whereby we now are in the market for another plate reader, uh, because one of the ones we're using, the one I used to use is broken down, so I've had to train myself on another. Um, and what we've done, uh, we've taken some of the hits that are interesting from the Enemine library, um, screen them against um, E. coli Mer D and Mer E. And what we've also done in terms of an assay, we've gone back to Becker's original screening assay because that contains two less liabilities in the coupling system. Um, so what we're doing from now on is we're going to be doing all the high throughput uh, library-wide screening with the fluorescent assay we developed mm -hmm. and re-screening those hits with this second assay just to triage out anything that um, turns out to be spurious. So with that second Becker's assay, um, uh, it behaves very well. We get nice IC50s if we're talking about E. coli Mer E. Um, and if we're talking about E. coli Mer E and hits apart from J06, um, this molecule, um, MO2, uh, gives a fairly modest looking IC50 um, with a Ki that is going to be around about 89 micromolar. Um, but the one good thing about this is actually the data itself in that it shows a very nice hyperbolic smooth response. You would imagine that it can be represented by one binding constant um, and that actually is what we're looking for. Occasionally, however, we don't see that. So another hit is FO9, um, where the relationship between FO9 concentration and inhibition is a little bit more enigmatic. We um, see at the higher concentrations precipitation, uh, and we really can't make any sense of that. So <clears throat> we've gone through um, FO9 and MO2, not just with E. coli Mer E, but also with um, Mer D. Um, and in the case of Mer D, we see a, a sigmoid response as opposed to a hyperbolic one, which might suggest for this particular protein, there's more than one binding interaction going on. Um, and similarly uh, with um, FO9. Um, again, there's more than one interaction. So FO9 with respect to the compound, to the enzymes we're working with, I would say is not something we would readily follow up simply because we've got considerably more than a single interaction going on. Uh, it's, it's rather more complex. Finally, uh, we've also looked at Pseudomonas reginosa and MERS-C with respect to MO2. Um, again, we, we get a sigmoid response uh, with an IC50 of about 490. So at the moment, um, in addition to supporting the, the NIH grant, we're basically ploughing through the other enamine hits we've got with this uh, second assay. And then the idea is to go on and do the IC50s that come out of um, those compounds which give attractive looking behavior with respect to their responses to inhibitor. And that's really where we are. All right, thanks. Any questions? Most of these seem to have very high hill slopes. Is that because you're thinking get multiple interactions? Yeah, exactly so. Exactly. So this is one of the reasons why the interaction of MO2 with um, coli Murray uh, is a far more, if you like, feasible proposition. Yeah. Um, that does look like a, a, a genuine inhibitor with a, a nice single you know, um, mode of interaction. Um, do you have enough compound to send to ready? At the moment, we might actually have to start looking to purchase some more <clears throat> some more MO2 
and uh, some more F09. We do have J06 in stock, I believe. So with regard to further work on that compound, that's fine. Um, but yes, we, 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 when, when we do have to start working at high concentrations in a spectrophotometric assay, which this is, then it does chew through compound a lot more rapidly. Right. Simply because the volumes of the assays go up by the nature of the technique. Um, and I, sh I should have some MO2 as well, Adrian. Fantastic. Thank yeah. Uh, and FO9, like the four. Yes. I have them all. Yeah. To send to the SSCCID, uh, we can send from Enamine directly. Okay. I can I can try to organize that. Yeah. 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 Thank you. And and that's in powder. Does that come in powder? Yes. And have we, as a group, been clear with Bart and his team about which experiments we're asking for? You know, which which proteins we're asking for the the soaking to be done with? Yeah. So. Uh, initially, pseudomonas, if we can, but um, from my point of view, if they don't have pseudomonas on hand and they have acetinobacter right there on the shelf, then they can start trying with that. Um, yeah, whatever is feasible at the moment. I will keep trying with E. coli. Right, because... And of, yeah. did you say mer E or mer C or D? <laughs> <laughs> So let me open the graph. So we, we had activity on originosa D and E and E. coli D and E. Yeah. Okay. D E. I mean we have you know micromolar values from um from those. I'm sorry, I forget whether yeah. Yeah, micromolar for E. coli and pseudomonas is slightly better for one of them on what well, for me or the E. coli. It's slightly better for pseudomonas, I think. Okay. Um, I, I'm, from memory, I think the IC50 is around about 100 micromolar for the, for the, pseud, for the pseudomonas hit. Uh, pseudomonas murray. For J06 or MO2? MO2. Oh, okay, yeah. okay. I was looking at J06. Oh, no, no. Yeah, for J06, <laughs> your, your uh, IC50s are down in the order of around about 20 micromolar. Yeah. And if you work out what the KIs come out to be for pseudomonas, they turn out to be of the order of around about 16 for E. coli for J06 for Murray. Um, and the D there lower than that. I think for yeah. the D there's a, a calculated KI of less than less than one. However, the uh apologies for checking this yet again. Um, but the library was designed versus Mercy. Is that right? I keep forgetting, sorry. No. <laughs> it, it was a combination of, e, of mere, no, not mere D, C at all. It's combinations of mere D and mere E. Okay, so did you want uh, trials of, of J06 versus mere C at all? Because I think you, you, were su you were suggesting that, right, Joe? Well, I would. We haven't done that yet, but yes, we, 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 do, we do need to go back to J06 and mere C. Frankly, more F. Okay, I mean, just I'm I'm conscious. We just want to be really clear with Bart. And, yeah, you know, what, what we're asking. Yeah, for. I would I would start with a D and an E. Okay, I don't I don't remember what we have in the freezer, but uh, sounds good. Yeah, they are very similar D and E from Pseudomonas. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Any other questions about um, Adrian's slides? Uh, Bart, um, yeah, I mean, I, I think one of the <clears throat> challenges we have right now is that, um, you guys have solved acinetobacter C, D, and E, um, but we don't have the enzyme assay for that at this point, so we don't know the activity. <clears throat> so I don't know. I mean, again, that's up to you what, you know, what resources you have, what protein you have, and so on, but <clears throat> I think at some level, 
looking at Asanita Vector would be a good thing. Um, again, you're going a little bit in the dark there because you don't have the enzymology. Um, but um, I just think in general, in terms of Asanita Vector as a as a target, is is a good is a good thing. Uh, I mean, you're, you're, again, your call in terms of you know what you know what resources you have and protein you have and so on. But the fact that you've gotten Asanita Vector, you know, crystal structures for for C, C, D, and E. And I think the pseudomonas, as I recall from like Jan and, 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 and Peter, you know, pseudomonas system was sometimes a little bulky. Um, but anyway, that's just my, this, this comment. Uh, you, you and I guess Scott, Scott's going to be carrying the, the torch from here on, right? Yes, uh, Scott's going, what we're doing right now with SSGCID is the, the lab in Kansas is going to be doing the crystallizations. Um, and they have a nice uh, robotic setup that does small drops, as well as they just got a new like Crystal Rock Hotel that they're really enjoying putting things in and scanning all the time. So we'll we'll send everything to them to do. And um, but we agree that I would be what we call the shepherd, which is a person who is overwatch on the project to kind of make sure person who's supposed to know where things are supposed to be and where they're going. Um, so that that'll be my role. And then they'll be setting up crystal trials and they have a nice connection to uh, synchrotron, the NSLS2 that will be able to send crystals to. And so, yeah, if Adrian, you, I think the slides will be on, on the GitHub, right? And so I'll, yeah. I might go over this with Scott um, just to make sure. And I don't think they're actually overwhelmed right now with setting up crystal trials. And my only concern with, with these compounds is the, it's going to be like DMSO concentration in the in the crystal trials. Yeah, uh, no, I, uh, I can appreciate that because they, uh, well, they are fragments; they bind weakly. Right. Exactly. Um, one thing I was going to say: if you, if the activity is a question, actually the the enzymatic activity, if you send us a protein sample or samples, we can fairly quickly, in short order, tell you whether they're active or not. If that's actually something that's useful. Yeah, I, I, that sounds that sounds great. Um, I think that some it's often useful to know that because it sort of it it helps us kind of gauge our effort level, right? You know, we might we can set up the crystal trials pretty easily um, and watch them. You know, it's just a couple of crystal trials, but if we actually have, you know, if we but then are we going to set up like thousands of trials probably not we'll probably set up the standard short screen and then and see what happens i guess right you know yeah so so i think only i mean from my side I, I think the focus should just be on j06 um and as many of the mirror ligases that you can screen against with j06 and you know since the potency of that is typically below 50 micromolar um, I mean, in terms of DMSO concentration, you shouldn't have to be at a real high DMSO concentration, I wouldn't think. No, I mean, I mean, M0, M02, yes, but but I mean, I think it's a focus. If, if we, you know, we just need to get a structure at this point, and so my, yeah. I would, I would really focus on J06 and against as many isozymes as you guys can stomach, I guess, so to speak. The the data I've put up. Um, the DMSO concentration in the actual assays was 2%. Um, so I guess it depends. Well, you know your crystals better than I do. It, dep it depends what they can tolerate. Well, right. I, I think in general you want um, – each protein is different, but in general you want you know less than, say, 4%, 5%. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it really just comes down to being able to make a stock that's concentrated enough to deliver that and the right. sufficient concentration of the compound in the drop. Right, which is why I was wondering if it was powder, because we'll probably try to mix them yeah. up at 100 millimolar and see yeah. if they're soluble. Yeah. And then that also reminds me, I should probably give you Scott's 
shipping address probably be better to go directly to Scott instead of through me. Yes. Yeah. All right, sounds good. Okay, great, thanks. Um, okay, Adrian, you can unshare if you are happy to. Um, a mention was made there of um, NAH grant. Does, does anyone want to update everybody on, on anything that might be going on there or do you want to leave that to a subsequent meeting uh, laurie do you want to say anything me <laughs> oh, not laura L laurie. laurie i was gonna say there's such similarity there that it's bound to happen <laughs> at some point um <laughs> yes so i've been working with uh chris laura adrian and joe uh to pull together an r21 level proposal to support some chemistry effort um, happening at Northeastern to try and, uh, you know, to Joe's point to really push on the JO6 in particular. Um, I think MO9 is is probably our, our backup in, in terms of the proposal itself, but, you know, just looking to try and actually be able to, to contribute some chemistry. Um, we've got a letter of support from BART at SSGCID, which is really great also. So, yeah, that will go in this week. So, so MO man, that's all good. It's be like the small amount of money we got out of Antruck. Well, it's a little bit more than that, just to try and help the various chemistry efforts to all contribute towards the the greater good. So, it's a, a, a small step forward, and uh, hopefully, if if we made a bit of progress in that, that might push that series on to something else. And hopefully, with some of the other series as well that you know you've been working on it uh, in London that. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. If we get those and look at those, hopefully some of those might look promising and we might be able to go somewhere for you know additional chemistry money for yep. for that. Um at the moment, the kind of biochemistry is 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 just about turning okay, isn't it, Adrian? We've had a few wheels come off, but they're back on again. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we could probably do with uh an extra pair of hands uh, to more regularly do that so that we actually do something else in our lives other than <laughs> my day's work all the time so um i think that's what we'll be looking looking to oh, do and also a new play reader a new play reader. <laughs> yeah so uh, i think that's our plan uh, and and knowing that there, hopefully if there's some more successful in more chemistry then we can justify pushing pushing that forward as well uh to the you know brave new day when hopefully we can put in for some multi-million pound grant to really make it joint jointly work together for everybody yeah i mean obviously you know structure with one of these things bound is going to be extremely enabling mm. definitely we were talking about that for for any cc carb type proposal we were thinking that would be the the key thing to get for for a proposal of that kind for some more chemistry mm. It was certainly the fail point at the, the last time, 12 years ago, we had a big uh, MUSC screening program, not getting a co-crystal with uh, what is now life arc inhibitors. Mm. That was our downfall. So no pressure, crystal team. <laughs> um, all right, great. Thanks for that. The um... So the uh, other thing I wanted to just mention was um, the data that came back on the UHANG's um, efflux proof um, amine, uh, which I'm not sure we talked about last time, but um, <clears throat> so the, the derivative of the um, AZ compound 5095 and uh, UHANG made the amino derivative of that as a as a way of trying to reduce efflux um but that didn't seem to work very well so the results for the compound which is 22 3p down here um gave results that indicated that that certainly didn't solve the problem um we know from laura's spr results that there appears to be a good binding interaction between that molecule and Mercy, I think it was. Um, so I guess we were, you know, assuming that the problem here is that the molecule 
is um, is just being pumped out. So the addition of the primary aim doesn't help. But um, I guess we do we yet have any um, evidence of it inhibiting the enzyme in vitro outside the cell? I guess we don't have that, right? So we have to make the assumption. Yeah, I don't think it's done yet. So there were some single shot experiments, right, Adrian? Um, yeah, we, uh, we, we, we still, we still have to deconvolute what happened there because, uh, of, uh, interference in the assay, but we have an, another couple of assays to do to be sure about the data that we've got. So it's a case of watch this space at the minute. Okay. It w because the design uh, of the compound makes a lot of sense because the abine points into solvent basically. Yeah. So. We were very much assuming the molecule would still be effective against the enzyme, and it would be great yeah. to know that, just uh, not least for Yu Hang's thesis. Yeah. Um, and so now, uh, yeah, Yu, Yu Hang's been uh, uh, looking at some other compounds, which um, Yan, who's on the call, had uh, predicted to bind, um, and which we put aside while we we're trying to finish off the amine work. Um, and Yu Hang's been uh, developing some chemistry towards certainly the compound on the left and has got plans for uh, two of the other compounds there. So just to get you in the loop, Jan, uh, you hang yes. playing around with some of this chemistry. Excellent. So that's, uh, we talked those to more C, just to be clear, not not more D like the other ones. Right, right. Yep. Yes, that's right. I remember. Okay, good. Um, and uh, and then from the other things here, I don't I don't think there was anything else that that we were waiting on. But but I want to throw this open to the floor in case people have managed to talk about something that they want to bring to light. Lots of little things if, here. But... I'll I'll, I'll, <clears throat> I'll jump in if no one else wants to speak up. I don't want to cut anybody else off. Go ahead. So, so I know we had some email exchanges about the CC for carb thing, the yeah. NIH uh, program. So, I, I obviously having a crystal structure would be great, but in in, in this case, <clears throat> you know, there are the crystal structures that you know the SSCCID has solved for the AZ series. Now, I think where we have three three several different systems and so on. So, I, I think in terms of of writing up a, a proposal for them to do some library work I, I i i would recommend going forward with that i mean i think i mean i look i look at that equity as kind of what your lab is in driving matt so i mean it's kind of in your in your i feel like that this, that's in your shop to 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 do but i'm willing to help in any way with with that but i i would encourage you i wouldn't i'm not sure what you're necessarily waiting for in terms of a structure um i think you know, the SSGC idea has done a great job of delivering those structures. And um, so I, I, I think there is some um, rationale to to make a library proposal. Um, but that's, again, anything I can do to help, I'm, I'm happy okay. to do that. Yeah. Um, and I think there is some data. I mean, I think uh, there is some data coming through uh, Adrian's shop, right? I think was on some of those compounds. It's just, I mean, we've had this... I've been pushing, I mean, I can blame me. I've been pushing really hard on the enemy library for this NIH grant to try to get this going. So they, they've been really focused in on that right now. But I think we're almost, for the, at least for the grant, we've, Adrian's done this great job of get, generating the data we need. Um, so anyway, just for the AZ series, I think there's, there's, um, I, I would really encourage you to think about, you know, e either you're going to write, write, eventually write up another grant for some place, or if you want to get some compounds made, um, I mean, that's a resource that I think you can make some good case to get some a library made. Anyway, that's that's my thought. Anything I can do to help, let me know. Thank you. Thank you. That's really appreciated. Yeah, no, we're, we're not we're not waiting for anything except, you know, the time to write it up. Um, it's that that's all it is. It's been a, a busy period of grant writing in, in the UK for other reasons. So, um, oh, by the, yeah, I, I so along those lines, congratulations, I should say, I mean, Maybe other people know, don't know, but congratulations on your antiviral uh, with the AVID systems. Um, that's, that's fantastic. Uh, well, well done there. And 
that's going to keep you hopping for sure. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. No, thanks. It's um, yeah, the, the, it, it it has a project manager in there and it has a lab manager, so it's hopefully uh, quite a, a well structured team. Um, it'd be great to have something similar on the, you know, antibiotics. <laughs> um, with uh, with some of the data we've got, so yeah, um, I, no. So your offer is really appreciated, Joe. Thank you, and um, I, I I think you're right. You know, and it, it's also one of those things where um, it, it's right now it's difficult to write up a, a bigger proposal on it. I think because it is basically something where we need some fairly dedicated chemistry doing um, to to push us over the line for a bigger thing. Yeah, so I, th I think it's a good scheme for it. Okay, um, great. Anything um, else anyone wanted to raise? We've covered the, the chemistry and, oh yeah, uh, the, the one thing I was going to mention, um, in addition, so, so the compounds that I, I showed at the start that we're working on are the ones, you know, that are that are derivatives of, well, validating some of the chemistry around the enamine hits and a couple of competition hits. Um, there was that, so previously we sent, um, you know, a bunch of compounds from the competition to be evaluated by SPR and one of them hit. Um, the one from Finley McLean, right? And it was that compound that gave a, a decent hit on the SPR. And um, yeah, we were just wanting to make sure that that compound was was still part of, you know, kind of crystal trials. I know there's lots of compounds that are due for crystal trials, but yeah. that, that compound was was still part of that group because it would be amazing. Yes. Yeah, okay. they are. Great, great, thanks. I mean, obviously, you know, as a discrete piece of work, where we had a bunch of people suggest compounds, which we then made. Um, the, the the cherry on that paper would be if we got some kind of structural information or, you know, validation that one of the compounds is is binding and is inhibiting. Yeah. You know. Yeah, it is. It is there. All right. <laughs> great. Thank you. No problem. All right. Yeah. Anything else anyone wants to raise? Hopefully the um, the compounds we bought from Enamine, and we we have uh, funds. I should I should say for another round of purchase if we want to do that. So if there are other compounds that have come from the Enamine libraries that need a little bit of SAR, uh, and we can you know spend a couple of thousand pounds on buying a bunch of compounds that would enhance that, then we um, have a little bit of money left over from the Antrip grant, and we got a no cost extension until the end of March. Uh, and we have a few thousand pounds left to spend. So we can bolster SAR on some of those commercial compounds if that's of interest. The ones that we've done already are the ones that we know about, but if there are ones that we haven't looked at, uh, which maybe have been the result of more recent screening that we need to that we need to purchase compounds for, just let us know and we can design some. Okay, it's good to uh, know that deadline. What's the turnaround time for invoicing Enamine and getting the money off the books? I mean, uh, to to get the the order in is you know a week or so. To get the invoice in is a week or so, and then delivery is a couple of weeks. So, yeah, if so, we can order this month, that would be ideal. Okay, so we have two weeks. Yeah, something like that. I I just couldn't quite remember if we had um, explore the the commercially available matter around some of the more recent hits. I I just I've I've forgotten if we've done that. Uh, I don't think we have. Uh, I think we've just been focused on trying to get the hits. That Joe, we ought to have that follow-up conversation sometime. Yeah. So if there are some, then just let us know. And and you know, it's it's a pretty quick thing to do to find the the five most mm. similar commercially available compounds, um, and we can just put the order. Mm. Show sure, that as an action, uh, Joe, Adrian, Laura, to follow up on. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Great. Otherwise, we'll spend it on something else, right? <laughs> No, exactly. So let's spend it on that. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Okay, fantastic. Thanks very much, everybody. Okay. Thanks, see everybody. Bye. Bye.